Well, good to be back from the bye and uh, excited here for week three. Yeah, man, it's fun. Uh, guys, a good time to enjoy with your family. Uh, you know, get your legs fresh, get your mind ready to go, and uh, ready to go at it. It should be an interesting game on Saturday. I mean, there's a lot of former teammates, a lot of guys that you won the championship with back in, in, in tw uh, 2022. Um, what's it going to be like lining up against, uh, you know, MBT under center and seeing Boris and Javon Leak and, and all those guys? Um, to, to put in a short form, it'll just be fun. Uh, you know, glad to see them found a, found a home, but, you know, hate that it had to be on the other side, and now we get a chance to go at it, you know. You go from going at it in practice and talking stuff to now it's the real deal and, uh, you know, we're going to treat it as such. So it's a real game. Having been a teammate of McLeod for a number of years, I mean, it's obviously got to give you a leg up, of, you know, for strategizing for this week. I mean, what challenges does he bring to this defensive group for you guys? Uh, you know, he's he's very seasoned. He's a seasoned veteran in this league and, you know, it's not much that he hasn't seen. And, uh, you know, so it just it just all comes down to us doing our job and, you know, make sure we make things hard for him. Don't give him an easy picture. Don't give him things easy to break down and allow him to sit back in the pocket. So, you know, we're going to try to get him moving and uh, try to mix it up for him. Obviously, I don't want to put the card ahead of the horse, but, you know, just looking at practice this week, Flo not being on the field. I mean, if he's unable to go on Saturday, how much of a loss is that for you guys? Uh, that'll be a big loss, but man, like you said, we're always ready. Uh, you know, we got people lined up for miles, ready to go pass rush and get after the quarterback. Uh, but you know, uh, Floyd do his part and make sure that he'll be there. When you look at Edmonton, this is a team that's trying to, you know, make that next step. But they've had some two tough losses. You feel like that's a team that's going to be a little desperate and going to make things real tough for you? Yeah, it's early in the season. I wouldn't say they're probably necessarily desperate, but you know, they are hungry and. Um, you know, any time a team is coming for us is, is one week. So we're hungry too. We're just as hungry. We're just as desperate to get a win because we take everything we want to know. But, uh, you know, you can't let a team's record dictate how you're going to play the game. So uh, we come out the same mindset every time. How does it feel, you know, you guys last year started the season on the bye. You got the bye after the week one. What's the mentality, you know, coming off of wins but being on the bye and getting your, you know, getting back into it? Um, trying to get your body flowing, get your get back into the football mindset. That's the first thing you want to do when you get back. You know, it's refreshing to see everybody. But, um, you know, just understanding that, you know, we had our time off and they haven't. So it gives enough time to watch film, enough time to, um, uh, you know, prepare and, and see what they like to do. Um, but, you know, for us, you know, it's just all about making sure that we're healthy and feeling good and ready to run around. You guys really picked things up defensively in the second half against BC. What are some things maybe you guys are working on to get the, you know, right off the hop, really kind of cement how you want the game to go? Um, just how we play, how we attack the field, um, how we fly to the ball, how we run to the ball. We need 12 men around the ball at all times. And I think that's what you're going to see from us every time you watch us, but especially this, uh, this Saturday. Thanks for yeah. so Obviously going up against a team that you're very familiar with. Uh, what do you expect the emotions to be like on Saturday for you? Uh, we'll see. I, I don't really know what to expect yet. It's been a while since I played against a former team and spent a lot of time there. So I'm sure I'll be emotional about it, but uh, just looking forward to, uh, to playing a good game and going out there and giving my best effort. Were you surprised by the offseason changes that they made over there? I mean, obviously the record speaks for itself and the lack of success that they've had in the last number of years, but were you surprised with the amount of changes that uh, they undertook this year? I mean, anytime like you have a bad year like they had last year, um, there's going to be a lot of changes. So any, everything's on the table. So I didn't expect me to get traded, but that's part of life. And, and now I'm here, and, and it is what it is. I know we really haven't had an opportunity to speak with you. You know, when you did get traded, what were your first uh, thoughts of the trade, and, and just what was your assessment of it, and, and coming to a different city and a bigger city like Toronto? Yeah, you know, it's always mixed feelings whenever you get traded, um, but. You know, I was excited for the opportunity to come and play here in Toronto and, and to be around this organization. And, you know, we've, we've got off to a great start. So just trying to continue that, and, and I'm happy to be a part of this team. What are the challenges that you think Edmonton possesses uh, for you guys on Saturday? I mean, they're a good team. I know they're going to be physical, you know, being there, uh, knowing their head coach and, and their offense. I know they're going to be physical. They're going to try to start off with, you know, a strong run game. And uh, they got good players. I mean, they're 0-2, but... but uh, on paper, but they're really a better team than that. So we got to make sure we show up and bring our A game because I know they're going to be coming with it. You know, Winton was saying it's you know the one and zero mentality, but do you guys take stock in the fact that they've struggled early this far? I mean, you, you look at their first game. I mean, they blew a pretty hefty lead there in the fourth quarter last week, kind of back and forth, but ultimately not getting the win. I just look at it as them being hungry and being on the verge of trying to get a 
a win, and, and I think a hungry team's more dangerous than a team that's you know two and zero or three and zero at this point in the season. So can't take them lightly. Got to make sure we come out and play really well against them. You go back to last week against BC. I mean, I mean, you guys were on fire in terms of you know getting pressure and, and being able to attack the quarterback. I mean, you look at a guy like McLeod as you know more of a pocket passer, not a scrambler. Um, is that something that you kind of sink your teeth into and say, okay, we got to get more pressure on this guy and really bring the blitz home? I mean, that's what they pay me to do is get pressure on a quarterback, right? Uh, but McLeod gets rid of the ball really quickly, so we just got to be on point. We just got to make sure we're all all gas and then and then just watch out for the screens and other trickery that they're going to try to kind of slow us up. So um, we got we got dogs up front. So as long as we play our best game, I think we can get some pressure and really affect the game and help us get a one win. I was asking and went about this as well. I mean, it doesn't look as if Flo's going to go on Saturday. What kind of a loss is that for, for this group? Tough. I mean, he's a great player. He's he, he's a vocal guy uh, on our defense and stuff, but it's uh, next man up, Derek Parrish. He, he's, he's been playing really great, had a really good camp. So looking forward to him stepping up into that role and, and uh, kind of being there to, to help us get the victory and replace him Flo. We got a taste of it last year with Jared Brinkman, and, and I think the fans are, are really going to get an opportunity to see him this year uh, cement himself into this lineup. Being new to this team, what have you seen from him, and, and, and what do you like about his game and, and being able to play alongside him? I like everything. I mean, he's a good player. Uh, Brink's really good. He, he's up and coming. He's going to be one of the next great defensive tackles in this league for sure. I mean, his game is is great, and he pushes me to be a great player too every day, even though you know I'm a vet and older than him. Uh, just good to to have each other, and iron sharpens iron, so we just keep getting better every week. It seems like you've had a seamless fit in on the defensive line. How good does that feel knowing that, it's, you know, especially week one, you guys were able to have one of the more dominant performances in the league? It felt good, you know. I think um, just in camp, we really meshed really well and just and just playing together. You know, I, I had a good game on, on against BC, but I still feel like I'm still learning the defense. So I still, for me, in my head, I still feel like I can get better and and play a little better as I continue to, to get comfortable in this defense. But, um, you know, the sky's the limit for us up front. You've had, obviously played under Chris Jones, and that's a team that's, as we said, trying to get on the right track. Mm -hmm. How do you think he, what do you think his kind of message is going to be to that group? And what can you kind of expect from that team, especially offensively? You know, they got a lot of good guys you play with over there. What do you think their mentality will be like? They're going to be physical. They're going to come out and try to punch us in the face. Uh, they're going to be really tough up front. Um, you know, they're hungry for a win. So I, I know over there they're, they're dying to get a victory and to, and to turn that organization around. So they're going to come out firing for sure. And, and we got to be ready for it. And we got to come out firing too and match, match their intensity. We asked the offensive guys this a lot, but I've never really asked a defensive player about playing on grass here at BMO. Mm -hmm. How does that feel as a defensive guy? Is there, are there some things you have to kind of work on, especially whether it's your footwear or things you have to do with your technique to play on that surface? It hasn't been too bad for me. Uh, the first game was pretty good, so I, I didn't really notice it too much. So I can't really. I mean, it was it was fine for me. There might be some rain on Saturday. Would that you expect that maybe to have some impact on the conditions? Yeah, it'll probably get slippery, but um, footing goes both ways for both teams. So if if, if I'm slipping, they're slipping. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'll let you know after the game. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I was a bye. I was good. Good uh, get some guys, you know, some fresh bodies and. You know, unfortunately, a few guys that you know um, aren't going to be able to play this week. Uh, they didn't, you know, get the bye week that we thought. I, I don't know if you want to go too deep into it, but obviously, Flo not practicing, Didi not here. Um, their availability, availability this week and moving forward. Yeah, they're going to be out this week. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what Flo is going to be. I think Didi will be back the next week. Uh, he was looking pretty good out there uh, yesterday, running around. Just this, uh, too early. I don't want to have it be a long-term thing. Coach, you look at this week's matchup against Edmonton. I mean, you start the season 0-2. Um, and, and I know inside this locker room, it's 1-0 mentality. Um, but, I mean, do you take stock in knowing that, hey, this is going to be a desperate team, this is going to be a hungry team, and maybe this is good to have coming off a bye of, you know, a team willing and wanting to win? Yeah, I mean, every team should be willing and wanting to win each week. But, uh, no, they're 0-2, they're but, they, you know, they're right in each game. They had an opportunity to win. Uh, both games, right? So, I mean, they're a good team. They, their defense is playing well. Their offense, you know, hasn't scored as many points as they probably like. Uh, but we got, we got to understand that they're coming in here on, uh, with something to prove, and also they're trying to build confidence, and they have to get a win to do that. A lot of former teammates of this club as well. I mean, you look at one guy like McLeod Bethel Thompson. Just quickly, I mean, what do you think his legacy is with this organization and, you know, being a five-year member here, winning two great cups? Well, I mean, won a, a great cup here, right? And as a star, and obviously you too, uh, being a part of that, that club that, with Ricky winning it. Uh, but I think, you know, he, he earned it. Um, you know, I think fans that sometimes, you know, didn't really want McLeod around. And then, uh, you know, the way he ended his career here was, was great for him.
gameplay-wise, I mean, what, what challenges does he possess? I mean, obviously he gets rid of the ball quickly. Um, it's not much of a scrambler. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, but more of a pocket guy. What, uh, what does that package look like against him? Well, just he understands coverage too, right? So we got to disguise some things, uh, try to, you know, trick his eyes a little bit. And he can drive the ball. So, you know, those number two balls up the seam, he can make all the field throws, you know. Um, we just got to make sure we, we take those away. Is it, you know, preparing for to play against like McLeod, knowing you worked so, you know, with him a lot, have you noticed any differences in his game, you know, from what you watched the first two weeks? Not really. S same guy. Uh, you know, I think they're doing some similar concepts we did here. I think he's got a big hand on what they're doing offensively, so he's trying to do what he's comfortable with, and uh, you know, I see a lot of similarities to what they're doing in the past game. You know, and he's got some good veterans over there, you know, especially Eugene and Curley. Um, you feel like him and Curley, I, I think one game he had 12, he, had, he turned him 12 times. I feel like a bit of a recall from what you guys used to do. Yeah, no doubt. They got him in W where he, you know, number two in the boundary where he finished with us uh, with Mac. And so uh, they got a good rapport there. And, you know, he tries to force it to Curley quite a bit and hopefully forces a few in coverage. When you look at um, your lineup too, you know, is I guess, I'm assuming Hoaxie is able to come back in. Um, it's obviously not great to have Didi also missing out, but how good does it feel to know you guys have that depth and you got guys that could step up, and uh, especially when you're losing a big veteran like uh, Navarro? Yeah, it's big. Week one, we you know lost Coxy, and then now we're losing Navarro, so Polk's going to step up for those two. I thought he did a good job you know, for <laughs> coming in about halfway through camp and, and picking it up, and now he's got to move to another position. So, uh, you know, he's, he's learning on the fly, but uh, that's part of it. We're going we're gonna to lose some guys, but we feel like, uh, you know, our Canadians can play, um, all of them, right, can come in step to play play good football. So we feel good about our receiver depth. Ryan, when you talk about the Canadians too, I mean, you look at the progression of Dejan's career. I mean, what have you seen from him with your time here? Just more comfort in the offense, uh, comfort in the league, um, you know, understanding things a little bit, recognizing things better. I mean, we know he can go up and get it, right, and uh, running his routes a little bit better. But he just he's one of those guys, he's a 50-50 ball guy, and he'll go snatch it. And um, that's one thing that he has in his game that a lot of other uh, receivers don't have. With Tavares out, does that kind of open up Kadeem as well, more so in the passing game too? Uh, we'll see. We're always going to have some free release back stuff. You know, D Money's really good at that as well. Kadeem can as well. Um, so we'll get him involved. Uh, we're not going to change our offense too much just based off of Tavares being out. But uh, we got to make sure we put guys in the right spot uh, to be successful. Camp feeling all right. I know he missed. Uh, he was uh, under the weather a little bit yesterday. How's he feeling? He's feeling fine. Went out there today and was slinging around there. So uh, was good with his eyes. So uh, really. Um, I guess I'm happy that, that he's all right. So he was a little sick yesterday, only had uh, about a third of the practice. So uh, but he, he was out there, he looked sharp today. And also the weather for the game. It looks like we might be in for some rain, although we've been very fortunate here at BMO. But is that something you monitor and figure out how you want to game plan, especially if there's any potential delays? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we, we have, we'll look at the weather You know, that, that day. We always have our game plan in there, but maybe I just – You'll call a different game. Um, it's all going to be in there based off down the distance and personnel that we like. Um, but yeah, you're going to call some, maybe some more intermediate throws and you know, take the shots when they're there. Um, but that's that you're not going to do that when they're, they got soft coverage, right? They got to come fit the box, and when they're fitting the box to stop the run, that's when we can push the ball down the field. Perfect. Thank you.